Welcome back to the channel. This week we are continuing with the master bathroom edition. However, we're not in the bathroom. We are back in the shop and in this one we are going to show you a step-by-step -step on how to build this custom white oak vanity you see behind me with this fluted door design. So if you want to see how to build it, stay tuned, but let's get started. I know I've stressed this on other projects, but every build starts long before you cut any wood or glue any pieces together. I always sketch out a rough idea of what I'm looking to build, and then start with a preliminary cut list. I changed my plan about two or three times on paper, which saved me countless dollars in lumber. Mistakes are much cheaper in pencil. Once I got the plan on paper, I head on over to my local hardwood supplier to gather some white oak that I could mill up for the vanity. I'd be sure to take my time on this step and pick through the rack. Picking lumber with nice grain and somewhat straight edges is going to save a ton of time and money in the milling process. Back in the shop, I started breaking down the sheets of plywood that would make up the vanity box. I went with pre-finished birch plywood here for the first time, and I don't think I'll ever go back. You'll see here I also picked up a cutoff of some white oak plywood that I'll use for the exposed side of the vanity when you walk into the bathroom. Since the other end is going to be up against the wall, I just use standard plywood as that is much cheaper. Once I had all the pieces broken down, I then measured and cut the corner out to make the toe kick. I usually do a separate toe kick, but I wanted to give this style a try given I was going for the natural wood look. With that finished, I started cutting the dados in my two end pieces that the bottom of my vanity will slide into. Now I don't own a dado blade, however you can still accomplish the same cut with a standard table saw blade. I make my initial pass and then repeat that multiple times, moving the fence over little by little until I get a nice snug fit with my bottom piece. Now I assemble the box together using some wood glue. I put a generous amount in the dado and make sure that the bottom rail seats firmly into place. I just picked up these corner clamps that are made for building cabinets. They have these pegs that lock into the 90 degree bracket and then clamp down to the cabinet box to ensure it's perfectly square. I have links to these as well as all the other tools I use in the build down below in the description. While we wait for that glue to dry, I cut some support pieces out of the remainder of the plywood and drilled pocket holes on each end that we will use to attach to the top of our cabinet and lock everything together. Now if you're going to be building more than I'd say one or two cabinets, I highly suggest you pick up these pocket hole clamps. I don't know why I waited so long to get these, but they fit right into the pocket hole that you drilled and act as a second set of hands while you get everything screwed together. Link to these ones down below in the description. With our box made and squared up, I cut the two dividers that are going to separate the two cabinet sides with the drawers down the middle. To secure these, I used glue and pocket hole screws. Notice I drilled the pocket holes on the drawer side of the dividers, so you don't see them when the drawers are in place. If you put them on the other sides, you'll see them when the cabinet doors are open. Given that this was a five foot span, I quickly whipped up an extra leg that I put down the middle of the vanity that I again attached with some extra screws that you won't see when the drawers are in. With our box totally complete, I transition back to that white oak that we picked up earlier. I'm not going to go in depth here on how to mill rough cut lumber as I just put out a video on the channel a few days ago on how to joint lumber without a joiner. If you're interested, I'll put a link down below. Essentially, the process I follow is to break down the rough lumber into shorter sections closer to the length I need for each piece. This minimizes the amount of milling that we need to do to each section. Once it's broken down, the goal is to get a straight edge on one side that we can then flip and put against the table saw fence to further cut down these pieces into the size that we need. These boards were already flattened on one face, so I didn't need to run them through the planer first. When building face frames, I always start with the outside pieces. Here I'm cutting a 45 degree angle on my left piece as the white oak plywood is also cut at a 45. These two pieces are going to seam together at a 90 degree angle and wrap the grain around the corner rather than having a clear joint visible on the end. This takes a bit longer, but to me it's worth it as it makes a much more professional look in the end. Once those pieces are clamped into place, I measure the top or the bottom and then cut both the pieces to that measurement. If you're good and your cabinet is square, these should be pretty darn close 
but you don't want to measure each piece separately. This will guarantee that your face frame isn't square and will be an absolute nightmare when you go to install the doors later on, especially if you're doing inset doors like we are. After measuring and cutting for our middle sections, we then send all of the pieces through the planer, bringing them down to the final thickness before moving on to drill pocket holes in all the ends and screwing everything together. You'll see we use pocket holes quite a bit when building these cabinets. This is the perfect application and exactly what they're designed for. When building out the drawer sections on the face frame, both across the top and down the middle, I cut two spacers exactly the same length that I used to ensure that the spacing was dead perfect across the length of the drawer. This is super critical you get this dead right. If not, the inset drawer spacing will be off and it's going to look crooked because your reveal around the edge of the drawer will not be consistent. Back over on the cabinet box, I drilled pocket holes along the top, bottom, and end that goes up against the wall. These are going to be hidden in the final product, but will provide plenty of strength to attach the face frame to the cabinet box. The side that didn't get pocket holes, I simply glued and put clamps on overnight. After a quick sand, I set the cabinet on its back and positioned the face frame exactly where I wanted it and sunk in a couple screws. You can see there are some spots I didn't have pocket holes like along the drawers and again I just added some clamps until the glue dried. While we're waiting on the face frame to dry, we can start the process of mounting all of the drawer slides. I have a separate video coming on how to install these, so I'm not going to go over every step. Uh, I'm using the Nobman Lee Soft Close Undermount Slides off of Amazon. To mount these, I take two scrap pieces of plywood and bring it to the front of the face frame, ensuring you have it pushed up all the way against the side and mark the corner of the face frame. Then I align the rear bracket mount directly in the corner that I marked from the face frame and screw it into place. Repeat this exact process for all of the drawers. Once all of your back brackets are installed, you can take those boards and screw them to the back of your cabinet in their respective corners. This leaves you with your mounting brackets perfectly lined up with where your face frame is when we mount the slides. Next, you'll take your drawer slides, slide them into the rear mounting bracket, and install them into your cabinet box for your fit. I am doing inset face frames, which means my drawer slides will connect just behind my face frame and screw to my cabinet box. Once we have all of our drawer slides installed, we can grab some measurements on how big we need to build the boxes. To make the drawers, I subtract an inch from the height of the opening to determine the height of the drawer. Once we have all the pieces cut, I cut a groove a half inch from the bottom of the drawer, a quarter inch deep to accept the plywood drawer bottom. Because we're using undermount drawer slides, I need to notch the back corners of each drawer to allow the drawer slide a place to sit. The bandsaw makes quick work of these notches. Once we have notches cut on all of our drawers, we put the boxes together using glue and brad nails, sliding our bottom panel into the groove that we cut over on the table saw. The last thing we need to do once all of our boxes are built is attach the drawer slide clips to the front corners of each box. These are what the actual drawer slides will lock into, ensuring the drawer doesn't wobble around in place. Following the exact same milling process as before, I cut the rest of the lumber into pieces needed to make all of the drawers and doors out of solid white oak. This did require gluing up some of the smaller pieces to make some bigger slabs that we can use for the cabinet doors. I came back the next day after giving all the glue some time to dry and planed all of the pieces down to their final thickness before moving on to cutting everything down to the final dimensions. Using the Craig cabinet hinge jig, I then drill all of the holes for the hinges and start installing them. For this vanity, I'm going with the Blum inset face frame hinges. I know I've said this on a few of the other products I've been using, but this hinge jig is absolutely worth every single penny. And if you plan on building any amount of cabinetry, it's an absolute must.
Now you'd think we'd be wrapping up this project and getting ready to apply finish, but you'd be wrong. I saw this fluted design on Pinterest and knew I had to do it to this vanity. So I whipped up a quick jig that I could adjust for each piece that allowed me to securely pass my router along all of the drawers and doors to get that fluted look. I ended up laying out lines 5 eighths of an inch apart and ran the router along each line. Now this took me forever. It probably took me just as long to get these grooves on the doors and drawers as it did to build the entire vanity up to this point. But in the end, I think it was worth it as it came out perfect. Prior to applying finish, I gave these a final sanding and then cleaned everything with mineral spirits and a tack cloth. For the finish, I went with Rubio Monocoat in the natural color. This is by far my favorite finish for white oak as it leaves it looking natural and untouched. Now if you've never used Rubio Monocoat, you simply mix part A and part B and then rub it on your product, let it set up for a little bit and then wipe off all of the excess until your cloth is clean. For the doors and drawers, I applied this with a disposable paintbrush as it's the only thing I could use to get the product down into all of the grooves. I gave the finish the night to dry and came back the next day to mount the drawer faces. The easiest way I've ever seen to install the inset style is to use playing cards. I put the drawer face in the opening and insert as many playing cards that will fit snug in the top gap. Then I take half that amount and set the drawer face on top of them. This ensures that the drawer face is perfectly centered in the opening. With our drawer face centered in the opening, I put a screw through the hole for our drawer pull to temporarily hold the drawer face while I come from the back side and send some permanent screws. Once all the drawers are secured, I then finish this piece off by installing all of the hardware. With the build complete, I got some help bringing the vanity upstairs and put into its final place. That's going to do it for this build. Make sure you guys hit that like button if you enjoyed how this turned out and make sure you're subscribed. In the next video we are going to wrap up the bathroom series with paint, mirrors, faucets, shower door, shower faucet, and a bunch of other stuff and do the big reveal. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it very much and we'll see you next time.